Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at a project that I did on our channel back in 2021, and it was a fairly successful video back. Well, spoiler alert, not much has changed, but we're going to take a look anyways at how to do this here in 2024. What we're going to be doing today is installing OpenVPN inside of a Proxmox container. We're going to choose to use the newest LTS version of Ubuntu, which is going to be 22.04 as of right now. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create our container. In order to create our container, we're going to need a container template. In order to download our container template, we're going to first need to log into our Proxmox web interface as I've pre-done here. Then we're going to choose our storage drive in most cases for default installs or default storage locations. Proxmox is going to store this stuff in local. So we'll select local and then we'll go ahead and we'll select container templates or CT templates. Here you can see that I have a 22.04 template downloaded, but if I didn't already have it downloaded, I'd go ahead and click on templates and then I would enter Ubuntu and I would select the 22.04 template and press download. The download process would go through and I would have a copy of 22.04 LTS release of Ubuntu. Since I already have it, I don't need to download it, and I can go off and start the process of creating my container. To create our container, we're going to click Create Container in the upper right-hand corner. We're going to give it a name, and we'll fill out our password. With our password filled out, we'll press Next, and we'll select our 22.04 image that we downloaded previously. Then press next. Eight gigs will be fine, so next. One core will be fine, so next. Memory, 512 will be fine, so next. And for our network, we'll make our appropriate adjustments for a bridge. It's fine if you don't have VMBR2. That is a configuration that I've done separate from this tutorial. And we're gonna choose to use a static IP address. Now, static IP addresses are gonna be assigned inside of your IP address schema for your network. Mine, in this case, is going to be 192.168.2, and I'm gonna choose 103. Then we need to tell it our CID notation. Mine will be slash 24, which is most standard home networks that run from 0 to 255. Of course, with 0 being reserved and 255 being reserved. Then for our gateway IP address, we'll enter ours. Mine's 192.168.2.1 for this particular network. We'll hit next. We'll use our host DNS settings. So we'll press next and we'll select finish. Proxmox will automatically set up our container for us and we can proceed when Proxmox tells us that the task is okay, like so. So now we have our container. We're gonna need to do some command line alterations to this particular container in order to allow a particular virtual networking device that is called TUN to be passed through into our container. And this is going to allow us to basically connect our containers, quote unquote, Ethernet point to the VPN that we're going to be hosting. And this is an open VPN server, not a client that would be used with a VPN service. So in order to do this, we can go ahead and we can select our PVE or our server, whatever we called it, and we can then select our shell. With our shell open, we're going to need to edit a file. To edit the file, we'll use a tool nano, and what we're going to be editing here is a file in etc pve lxc and then we'll enter our container number in our case it was 113 and add dot con f to it so here's the configuration file for our particular container and we're going to add two lines to this that are going to pass through that TUN device that we talked about earlier, as well as set a container group ID, which is going to allow this unprivileged container to communicate with that networking device on the Proxmox system. The first line we're going to be adding is here, and the second line is right here. Now, 
don't worry, I will provide you documentation both in the form of commands and the Proxmox documentation on doing this particular project in the comments section below. So at this point, if you would like to copy and paste and not try to copy all this from the screen, go ahead and look in the comments section below and open up that documentation. So with this saved, as we always do when we're using the nano text editor, we can press Control X, Y, and Enter, and we can continue to move on. So this step's already been done here on my system, but I'm gonna execute it again so you can see the process. We need to use the chown command to set both user and group IDs for that devnet ton file path that we have spoken about a little bit here that's going to allow us to create that virtual networking device. And here's what that command will look like. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're gonna issue an ls Dash L command on this file path just to verify that our ch owned command took effect. And if you get an output like this, it has, and you're ready to continue on. So we're going to head back to our Proxmox web interface. We're going to select the container that we created. We'll press start and we're going to open the console window for that container. With the console window open, the default login will be root and the password will be one that you set up when you created the container. The first thing I always do when I create a new container, especially one with an older release like 22.04 is to run an APT update and I'll string it together with an APT upgrade and I'll add the dash Y to answer yes and we'll run that. So now we have all the updates done to our container, so it's fully updated and our repositories are updated. We can start installing some of the prerequisite software that's needed for the installation of OpenVPN. And we will be using a script today to easily set up OpenVPN. So this script is going to be housed in GitHub, so we're going to need to download the Git software so we can pull that in from github to do so we're going to use the command apt install and we're going to install openvpn and get in the same line by pressing spaces in between them we'll answer yes and the installation will take effect so now we're going to use git to clone the repository where our script is located with the command get clone and the address to our repository. We'll cd to that newest file that was created, which is going to be called openvpn-install, and we're going to go ahead and execute the script using bash openvpn and dash install dot sh will confirm our public IP address. It wants to use UDP by default, so we're going to allow it. It's going to ask you the default configuration port for OpenVPN. The default one is going to be 1194, but you can change it at this point if you choose. Today for this tutorial, we're going to use 1194. Then it's going to ask you which DNS provider to use. I'm selecting Google. This is entirely up to you. It's going to ask for the client name of your first client. We'll call ours phone today as for the demo and we're going to press enter. Now it's going to ask about the installation of OpenVPN. We'll hit enter and it's going to do its thing. Now it's created our first configuration file. So if we were to run an ls on root, we'll see our configuration file right there. If we would like to create more users or edit the installation at all, we can run the bash openvpn-install.sh command again, and the script will execute. But this time, instead of going automatically into the installation, it's going to ask us if we want to add a new client revoke an existing client, or remove OpenVPN, or just exit the script. So if we wanted to create another client, we could just press 1, press Enter, and we would go through the same steps again, like so. And 
again, that file will show up in our root directory. Now, they're all on a container, but how do we get them off of a container? We've learned that it's fairly difficult to pass through a USB thumb drive. You can do it, but it's difficult. Um, my suggestion for this is going to be to use SCP, but we're going to need to create another username. Since this server is also using our root account, it's probably not going to be a good idea to keep root anyways. So let me take you through the process of finally creating that user account, and then I'll show you kind of how to fetch it off of this server with SCP. So the first thing we're going to do is go cd dot dot and we'll move back to our root file. This isn't mandatory. I just like to do it. I feel it's a little cleaner. And then here on Ubuntu, we'll type add user and we'll give this a username of VE. We can fill out the information about the user, including the password. And there you have it. We've created a user called VE. Now, since we're going to actually ultimately get rid of this root user account, we also need to give VE pseudo privileges. So we'll do that again by running add user VE, but this time we're going to add pseudo to the end of it, like so. And then we can exit out, log in with VE, and we're going to run a pseudo PASSWD or a passwd dash L and root. Then we'll give it our password, and this has locked down the root account. So the last thing we're going to need to do here at this point is actually fetch that configuration file. We'll move it to a place where we can talk to it with with our user account and then we'll I'll show you how to use SCP to get that on your local system. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and view that. This time we're going to use sudo, we're going to use ls and we're going to do a slash root, which is going to show us our files. Then we can do a sudo cp at slash root slash file name, and then a space and where we want to copy it to, which is going to be slash home slash ve in this case, or your username and the file name. Now, if we were to run the ls, we can see that we have our file right there. So here at our terminal on my Mac that I do all my filming and editing on, I'm going to show you how to use SCP to gather up this file. So there's a few different ways we can do this, I'm, but the general format for the command is going to be very similar. I'm going to go ahead and grab the entire home directory for this particular user. So it's going to be scp space dash r or recursive. So it grabs all the files in the folder. Then we're going to specify our username, which is ve at the IP address of the container. And then we're going to have a colon and the files we want to grab, followed by a space and the directory on our computer that we want to have them uh, extracted to and we'll press enter since we've never logged into this it asks us if our fingerprint is okay we'll answer yes we'll give it our system password and it downloads all of the files out of that particular folder and to the desktop of our host operating system where we can move them off to whichever client we choose to use OpenVPN on to communicate back with our Proxmox server. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, found it informational, and are now able to set up OpenVPN with no problems. I do want to add one last note. You are going to have to set up port forwarding on your router so that you can communicate with whichever port you configure from the outside internet to this container. That process is going to differ from every router that you use, so I won't be demoing it. And please go ahead and look up your model number. There will be a, there should be videos about it for most routers. As always, have a good night and consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow.